Coming up on Doctype, white space. Do your designs look like they were made by an engineer? We'll show you how to clean up the clutter. Then, ever tried an Ajax request to another website and have it fail miserably? We'll explain why that is. So get ready for margins and padding aplenty because Doctype starts now. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by FreshBooks and Less Everything. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that wants to learn a little bit of JavaScript or a developer that thinks everything they make looks like crap, Doctype is here to show you the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your next project to the next level. Nick, I heard a rumor that we were going into space today. I heard that rumor too. Actually, I was just going to tell them kind of why designs can sometimes look like they were made by engineers. Oh, like rocket scientists. No, not like rocket scientists. Today, we're going to be talking about white space. People will sometimes describe a design as looking like it was designed by an engineer. But over the years, I've come to the conclusion that the number one design mistake that people make to make their sites look this way is not making good use of white space. Now, white space, or negative space as it's known in the fine art world, is the space between the elements on your page. And if you have good white space on your page, you can make your site look more elegant, less cluttered, and a little bit more thoughtful. Macro white space is the space between the large elements on your page, such as navigation, big images, larger headers, and things like that. Now, for sites with less content, this can be a really important tool just because the macro white space takes up so much of the page. Now, let's get into some tips. When thinking about macro white space, start by breaking up your content into chunks and then arrange it on your page. You should almost never allow text to run right up against another element. At the macro level, treat paragraphs as large blocks of content. Before using color or lines to separate content, try using white space. Most of the time, it's all you really need. Micro white space is the space at the very small, like the space between individual letters or lines of text or list elements on your page. Now, for very content-heavy websites, this is a very important thing to pay attention to because it can really decrease the visual friction or clutter on your page. Now, here are a few tips. Use lighter fonts with less decoration and serifs. This will help decrease the amount of texture and visual friction. Use CSS to set the line height of your paragraphs. I usually set my line height slightly above the default, which tends to lighten up the visual weight of paragraphs. Again, use CSS to set the letter spacing. A tiny adjustment in letter spacing applied to every paragraph on your website can dramatically improve readability. Now next, Jim is going to be talking web security, but before we get into it, we'd like to thank the people that keep the hard drives spinning. FreshBooks is an easy to use online invoicing service that saves you time, gets you paid faster, and makes you look Fortune 500 professional. From estimates and expenses to time tracking and invoicing, FreshBooks makes everything quick and simple, letting you focus on your work. Share projects with contractors, send email or paper invoices, accept payments with PayPal, authorize.net, and more. You can even customize invoices with your own logo and colors. To get started with your free FreshBooks account, visit freshbooks.com. Use the discount code DOCTYPE to save $20 the first time you upgrade. Oftentimes we get the question of why Ajax can't fetch URLs from a different server than the original page came from. Today we're going to be looking at the reason why that is. If you're not familiar with Ajax, it's a technique for loading in data into a page after it's already been loaded, and it does this in the background. There's one major restriction with Ajax in that it can only load pages from the same domain that the original page loaded from, and this has to do with cookies. Modern login systems rely on cookies to remember who you are after you log in. So basically, that's the only credential you have. When you send a request to a page, it looks at the cookie to find out who you are. Now, if I was able to steal your cookie and use it as my own, the server would have no way of telling you from me, and I could do everything you could do. The security of cookies relies on two things. One is the unguessability of the cookie. If I can't guess what your cookie is or just forge it like that, then it's hard for me to pretend to be you. The other is browser security, and it does that through the same domain policy. When the browser requests a page from a, from a web server, it will only send the cookie for that particular domain. And it will actually send that cookie anytime you make a request to that domain. 
not just for pages, but style sheets, images, JavaScript, or whatever. So let's look at this scenario. Now let's say I log into mybank.com and I do my banking and then I just leave and I don't log out properly. So I might go to a site like Professor Evil's site, which his only purpose is to steal my information and my money. Supposing there was no Ajax cross-domain policy, Professor Evil would be able to make requests to my bank on my behalf. And since my browser is requesting stuff from mybank.com, it'll send my cookie along with it. And to my bank, it'll look like I'm requesting all these things. So with all that, Professor Evil could take all my money, see all my information, or literally anything else I could do in my banking, and it would be disastrous. Fortunately, since he can't request to other domains other than himself, I'm safe from that. Now, that's not to say that you're completely safe from having your cookie stolen. There are other techniques that try these sort of methods to get your data, and they're called cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery attacks. We'll be talking about those and how to protect yourself from those in future episodes. Do you want more out of life? Then what you really need is less. Less everything. Less everything are two cool guys that do great stuff like less projects, easily manage multiple projects, prioritize tasks, and assign tasks to people. Less accounting. The accounting app for small businesses to save you pain and suffering. Less time spent. Track your time and avoid billing mistakes. And of course, less comp. Jim and I went to less comp in 2009 and 2010 should be even better. To learn more, check them out at lesseverything.com. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Doctype. Be sure to check out our Facebook fan page and follow at Doctype TV on Twitter. Also, if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of Doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. And as many of you requested, we now have an RSS feed and we're on iTunes, so be sure to subscribe. So until next Tuesday, remember that every great page starts with Doctype.